So hi, hello and welcome again. Micro Hunter here, I'm Oliver. And today in this video, I want to give you a little bit of an overview of uh, the containers, uh, the sampling containers that I'm using when collecting samples, water samples, and also dry samples uh, for microscopy. Yeah, there are different uh, varieties that I have here. I've tried them out all. All of them I've tried out. Um, they all have their own advantages and disadvantages. And I just want to share uh, some of my thoughts uh, with you today. Um, you can already see over here that uh, there is a container here. It's a so-called uh, for centrifuging. It's a centrifuging tube uh, made of plastic. It's a disposable one. And you see that uh, I already collected a little bit of water in here. Um, yeah, there's some, some larvae, some insect larvae floating around in here. And uh, this uh, tube is actually one of my favorite ones. It's also one of the, the reasons why I'm actually showing it to you. It does have a few disadvantages as well, but it's uh, one of my favorite ones is first of all, because it's quite cheap um, and it's transparent. So light is able to enter it because uh, sometimes algae needed uh, for photosynthesis and it's also watertight. Yeah, so I always carry along um, a couple of these tubes uh, along with me in case I find a sample. Um, yeah, and then I simply collect the sample in those uh, samples in those tubes and then uh, I basically bring it home. Um, and uh, just by looking at it, you're probably already going to see a, a major disadvantage, and that is, look, it's kind of conical over here. So there is no possibility to actually stand it up uh, here, right? So this is actually one of the disadvantages. Um, so what I've made is the following. I 3D printed myself a, yeah, a, a rack. Here, here it is, okay? Um, so where you can actually put in the... Yeah, those uh, those tubes here. So I'm gonna move this um, out of the way and let's have a look at a few other um, uh, tubes here. And uh, because uh, yeah, they do have, uh, as I mentioned, their advantages and disadvantages. So I don't know if many of you actually remember what this is. It's these are so-called film canisters. So if you're uh, basically a little bit of an older generation like I am, uh, yeah, then you pre you're probably familiar with those. Uh, many of them were actually also black and had a, a gray cap. You can still buy them in, in bulk. I've seen them uh, on eBay. Um, and uh, the nice, the nice thing is, is that yes, they are watertight. Um, however, yeah, you see, um, the lid can be removed easily, and if there's a little bit of pressure applied, the lid might actually pop off. Uh, so those uh, film canisters, however, are quite useful still for uh, collecting and also storing uh, dry samples. Again, uh, because uh, the white ones allow light to go in, so also algae um, basically have a possibility to survive um, in those. But uh, yeah, maybe not as easily uh, obtainable anymore as they uh, used to be. So now let's have a look at a few others uh, here. Yeah, this one is, we already had a look at this one over here. You can see that there is a, yeah, milliliters are indicated. There's a, the lid looks like this here. Uh, yeah, and, yeah, it's, uh, and one of the things what I like about this is, look, yeah, it's flexible. Yeah, that is really important uh, because uh, it doesn't crack uh, quite as easy, easily. Also, this one over here. Uh, why am I mentioning this? Because look, I've got another one over here. Uh, this one does look clear, um, but is uh, actually made of very hard and brittle plastic. Yeah, the, the lid is still flexible. That's not a problem. Um, however, this one over here, yeah, is not flexible at all. And I actually already managed to crack a few of those, especially if you, uh, I don't know, yeah, carry it around with other things. And then if you're a little bit careless, it might uh, crack. Okay, so I'm I'm not using those uh, quite as uh, quite as often um, quite as often anymore. So, but these are my favorite ones. And uh, in the bag that I bought, I think there were 50 pieces in uh, in it. And look, there's a second. Uh, version of it and this one over here as a matter of fact yeah is flat and it can stand yeah so uh, you might take this into consideration when you ac actually buy those okay so let's uh, move those um, out of the way um, as well yeah and uh, this one um, as well and over here this one here is um, a yeah similar concept uh, um, just uh, much thinner and uh, what I've uh, found is the following, is uh, that uh, I've been able to store samples in this tube here for a fairly long time. So I'm talking about here a, a week, even with the lid on top, provided that the water sample is very small, right? Um, so if you have only a little bit of water, I don't know, maybe a milliliter or two, um, and uh, a lot of air, then you can actually put a lid on top. Um, and then, yeah, if you're, for example, traveling around, and then you can actually even um, store it in here for several days without the sample becoming anaerobic. Um, that's actually one of the mistakes that I, I made uh, some a couple of years ago. I was uh, collecting water samples. And what I've done is, is I've filled up uh, the 
cube all the way completely and then uh, basically put on the lid. Um, and then after a few days, uh, the water start to smell bad and foul um, because uh, yeah, bacteria, anaerobic bacteria started to grow. Um, and so for my my recommendation, therefore, is is, is um, yeah, use those tubes here and, and always leave um, quite a bit of air um, and then um, it's not going to be a problem. And every few days or so, you can actually open it up. Yeah, and you kind of fan a little bit to get the CO2 that might have accumulated um, out um, and get some fresh oxygen in. Then you can put on the lid again. And I was able to store the water samples like this uh, for a fairly long time. Yeah, so that's actually the advantage. And also those here work uh, quite well. Yeah. Uh, however, disadvantage here, it's kind of a little bit more difficult to actually get the sample out. Right, uh, because it's uh, so so narrow. So if you want to pick out something with a, a tweezer, yeah, you see, uh, not possible. Huh? Just take this into consideration. So a few more um, uh, containers that I've used uh, over the last couple of years um, are those uh, yeah, white containers here. I got them from a, yeah, uh, a drugstore. And they actually use those containers uh, to uh, put in cream, face cream and so on. Yeah? Um, they also are watertight. You can actually see I also collected some, some samples, dust samples, and I don't know what this is, right, um, in here. Um, um, here as well. Uh, yeah, by the way, these are teeth of, of an animal. I don't know, a cat or a dog. I don't know. I don't even remember from where I've got those. <laughs> yeah, some, some samples for stereo microscopy. Yeah, and here is here as well. Yeah, see. Yeah, so these are actually, th that's actually also something to look at. These are, um, yeah, from a caterpillar. Yeah, uh, when they turn into butterflies, that's basically the, the thing that's left over. Right um, after they, um, yeah, yeah, after the butterfly comes out, so it was, I know some strange uh, specimens. So that's a, a possibility. They're in different. Uh, they also come in different uh, sizes. I don't know if you're able to read this. Twenty milliliters. This one over here is what? Thirty milliliters. Yeah. So I got them from a yeah, drugstore, and this one over here. Those are here maybe not so suitable uh, for uh, for uh, moist samples because this one is not quite um, uh, uh, watertight. Um, but those containers here, yeah, as you can see in this case, um, ascorbic acid, it's vitamin C. I, yeah, those containers can be used to store dry samples. And then there's a, also another one that I kind of uh, yeah kind of got by accident. Is are those. Yeah, also with a push on snap on lid. Again, you see it's it's clear plastic. Looks nice, but again very brittle and and uh, cracks easily. Um, and you can also use this. I, I don't know if uh, um, this would be a little bit in my for my taste a little bit too small to store water samples. Yeah, um, I, I like to have them a little bit larger. Um, but I don't know. Maybe yeah, other dry substances can be stored quite easily in here, right? So um, I just wanted to, to show this uh, to you um, and uh, simply to, to give you a little bit of an overview and uh, maybe something that you've also seen already before because I do have a 3D printer. I'd like to also print my own tools. I've made myself this little uh, holder. So what I can do is, is the following. I can just put uh, the you know, tube in here and then um, it's easy, much easier for me to use a pipette yeah, to, to take out, uh, to take out uh, samples. Yeah. And uh, I'm not only using those for water samples, but look at this, what I got here. <laughs> this is uh, some snake skin yeah, that you can also put in here. And because it's a little bit wider, you can actually um, go in with a pipette, not pipette, the tweezers. Did I say pipette? Okay. Um, uh, base much much more easily. Yeah, so that's uh, basically all I wanted to, to share with you uh, today. Simply some, some um, I don't know, some recommendations and, and some some of the things that I've been using um, yeah, um, in, in, over the past. Just going to leave it at that. Uh, I wish you all the best. Uh, happy micro hunting as always and see you in the next video. Bye-bye.